Hi everyone, today we're going to make this beautiful Hello Autumn frame and these cute little leaf shelf decoration pieces. And we're going to start off with a summer sign from Dollar Tree. And I think they have these all year round in different themes. And I'm going to trace in, um, we'll trace the shape of it on some craft paper from the Dollar Tree. Because I want to cover up all that glitter. And now I'm going to cut out my pencil markings. Sorry if you can't see what I'm doing, but that is what I'm doing. Just cutting out the pencil markings that I made on each side. <laughs> and clearing my trash as I go. <laughs> And then I'm going to use some hot glue to glue this on, just mainly gluing the edges down. And now I'm just trying to make sure it's covering all of it. And then I decided to get my silicone spatula so I don't burn my fingers. Just smoothing it out and see it works really good and it's much easier than having to wait for Mod Podge to dry or any type of liquid glue I just find it more convenient quicker because <laughs> I'm always anxious to move on to the next step that's why especially when it comes to crafting now I'm just making sure I got all the edges down because that glitter is very messy. <laughs> and um, now I'm going to paint the whole thing in plaster by Waverly, which is like this nice off-white color. And I'm going to be using two coats of this today. I did one coat on camera and one coat off camera. <laughs> It's really good paint. I mean, I like how it just needs about two coats. But if all you have is like white paint, just plain old white paint would work just fine. Any brand, really. As many coats as it takes just to cover it, that's all you have to worry about. But, um, <clears throat> as long as it's like white or off white, because we're going to be decoupaging a napkin on here, and I find that the image shows up so much better if it's like white, like a white color. I guess because if you think about it, the backing like on a two ply napkin is always white for the most part, especially if there's an image on the napkin. Now I'm going to blow dry this until it's and then I'm going to add my second coat off camera and now I'm going to take some Jenga blocks from the Dollar Tree and just kind of start forming my frame just so that way I can see uh, exactly how much I'm gonna have to cut off of the last one because as you can see it's a bit long so I just take a pencil and I just kinda mark where I'm gonna have to cut it and I kinda did it on both sides right there but I take another Jenga block just to make sure that I can make the line straight and just taking my saw box from Walmart, I'm going to cut off that very end. And I did this to two of them only because I wasn't sure how many I was going to need at the time. But I wound up on one, so <clears throat> that's okay. I can always use that other one on something else. And now just smoothing the edges with a sanding sponge that I got from Dollar Tree. I didn't want any rough edges or splintery edges. So now I'm going to start forming my frame just to make sure that that piece actually does fit perfectly. And it wound up fitting really good, by the way. That's why I like how I could just make a mark. See? Just right. And then I decided to go ahead and just stain all my pieces with Antique Waverly Wax. Antique Wax by Waverly. <laughs> I don't know why I say it that way. It's so funny. But, um, it's a really nice stain. I really love it. It works really well as a stain. But I find if you put just a tiny bit on your brush, it stains it just fine. 
But if you put too much, you will probably have to wipe some off because the whole point of this is to stain them. I mean, you could paint them too. It's whatever you like, the, you know, whatever style you like better. But I decided just to go with staining them today. <clears throat> but I mean, you could have painted them like brown or black, but I really like the wood, the look of the wood. So now I'm going to start forming my frame with the Jenga blocks. <clears throat> and then I wind up going ahead and taking my E6000 glue and I'm going to start gluing these down one by one onto the uh, sign. And the reason I'm using E6000 instead of like hot glue or something that dries quicker is because I can have time to move them around if I mess up or if they look crooked or if I need to move them a little bit because E6000 will give you that time so that's why I used E6000. And if you want to still get that same kind of benefit and use a different type of glue you can use like fix all adhesive. Um, maybe wood glue. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how fast that dries compared to E6000, but I think it does dry a little bit quicker. So personally, you know, fix all E6000. Those are probably the way to go. But whatever works for you. I mean, if you can make hot glue work, I wouldn't blame you. <laughs> <clears throat> But yeah, I'm just going all the way around with these Jenga blocks. Oh, and when I stained them, I forgot to mention, I only did the tops and the sides because I wanted to make sure that my glue was really going to stick. I'm not sure if they would or wouldn't have, but I just wanted to be sure. But, um... One thing is I could have stained the very ends, but I thought that I was going to be gluing them together, but it turns out I didn't even have to, so I could have actually stained the ends, but that's okay. I wind up fixing it later where the ends are actually showing on some of the sides of the frame. <clears throat> but yeah, just gluing them on one by one, just take your time. No need to rush. And see, they fit just right in there. Look at that. Nice little puzzle. <laughs> they fit like a puzzle, don't they? And see, now I can fix all my pieces. Like if some look like they're out of like, like maybe crooked. But see, I got these pretty Dollar Tree napkins and I really love the design on them. The pumpkins and the sunflowers. So now I'm just going to cut out one square of that, just one piece, I mean. And uh, right now I'm just placing it in different parts of the frame, just trying to decide where I want it. But, um, yeah, see, I'm like trimming it and seeing if I want to leave it in a square form. And then I decided I'm going to go ahead and pull off the back of the napkin, because it's important to do that, because it just doesn't work the same if you don't. But you just have to find a little opening somewhere on the napkin, and it just peels right off, see? Just be really careful when doing so. And um, now I'm trying to keep it straight, not curl. <laughs> it's all curling on me. Then I take like a skinny brush and a little bowl of water, and I'm going to go around my design with water. Because you can then rip it away, like rip off the uh, edges and it will leave a rough edge going around your design. The reason that's good is because when you Mod Podge it onto your um, sign, it's going to be almost invisible, the uh, edges, and it looks like it's like painted on. It's so beautiful. But I don't know how this happened, but I ripped it off camera, and I thought I did it on camera. I'm so sorry. But I'm doing the same thing here. I'm just taking one of the flowers because I wanted to... Um, have another flower for when after I glue this down with the matte Mod Podge <clears throat> because to me the image was just a little bit too small in my opinion 
I mean, it probably would have been fine. Depends on personal preference. I mean, you could have probably leave it just like this. But I'm just smoothing it over with some, um, a piece of, uh, saran wrap. Couldn't even think of the name for a minute. <laughs> but yeah, plastic wrap. And that helps to smooth out all the wrinkles without using your fingers. Because if you do that, it might stick and it might rip your napkin. That's the reason I use the saran wrap. And see, that's very beautiful just as is. But, um, I decide to, uh take another flower from another napkin and you saw me like you know tracing it out with the water <clears throat> and now I'm gonna uh, glue that one right here in this upper corner and then smoothing it the same way I did the first one and then I'm gonna do the same thing for this part I took like two more flowers from another napkin and see, I made it look like it's part of it. Isn't that nice? I couldn't believe how nice that turned out. And now just smoothing that over. And see, that's a close-up of how it's turning out so far. And then I'm going to hair dry that for a second, you know, just to kind of make sure the Mod Podge is dry so I can add my top coat. So then I take more of my uh, matte Mod Podge and I just, I just coat the entire backing because I want to make sure that it looks even. And then I, of course, go over the image as well because, I mean, that's to seal it in. But yeah, coating the entire back, you know, just gives it the same finish and makes it look more even. And I know you can see my brother right there in the upper left-hand corner, like barely. <laughs> That's funny. And I really should not have been smoothing it while the Mod Podge was wet on here. Because I did wind up accidentally messing up a flower, but I wound up fixing it. Thank goodness. But, um, I'm just telling you what I shouldn't have done, so maybe I'll make the same mistake. <laughs> it's easy to do. But here I got this cute little Hello Autumn wooden words from Dollar Tree. It came in a pack of I forgot how many, but I really love all of them. I'm just going to paint that with Truffle by Waverly. It's this pretty, like, deep brown color. Once it dries, it gets even darker. <clears throat> but yeah, just trying to kind of evenly distribute the paint. And I'm going to blow dry this for a second. And it doesn't take long at all for that to dry. Especially with the hair dryer. And then I'm just going to make sure it's all even and make sure I did the edges. Because I wanted to make sure if that shows it looks nice. <clears throat> and then I didn't even glue on the Hello Autumn yet. I just put it there to see how it would look. And I was kind of trying to, to decide exactly how I wanted the top and the bottom to look. And I decided to make a cute little gingham print uh, bow. And this ribbon came from the Dollar Tree, and so did the twine that I'm tying it off with. But just a little heads up, I wind up adding more bows on top of more bows <laughs> later on, and you'll see what I mean. But it wound up looking pretty nice. See, right now I'm just kind of playing around with it to see what I want to do exactly. And then I decide to set that aside and just go ahead and glue on my uh, Hello Autumn at the top. And I'm just using hot glue for this part because it seems to hold really well. I guess because the words are so thin. It's not like bulky or anything. Doesn't that look really cute? And then I took a, uh, a um, piece of polka dot ribbon and made another bow a little bit bigger than my gingham print ribbon bow. And I'm gluing that one on top of the polka dot bow. And I kind of think I could have just left it a, just a bow, but 
I decided to crisscross two pieces of wheat from the Dollar Tree. I wanted to see how that would look, sticking out of from behind the bow, and I'm just going to adhere that with some Gorilla Hot Glue. And then mash that down with my silicone spatula, just to make sure it really sticks. <laughs> And um, then I'm going to go ahead and glue my bows on top of that. Or I might as well say bow because even though it's two bows, they're adhered together. So it's like a double bow. Just making sure it's glued well. And look at that. But I wind up adding more. Just as a warning, I just couldn't stop for some reason. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and add my hanger right now with uh, using a couple pieces of popsicle stick. And this is one from Walmart. And um, a piece of jute twine. And I just use the popsicle stick pieces as some extra stability. You could also use um, Maybe a couple pieces of cereal box or just whatever you have laying around that's flat enough and sturdy enough, you know, just to add some extra stability to your hanger. <clears throat> you might could use a piece of cardstock. And that's just if you don't have popsicle sticks, because I've been there, trust me, so I've just had to make do with what I have many times. Actually, most of the time. <laughs> And anyway, that is what I did so far, but then I wind up adding more, trust me. <laughs> See right here, I wound up adding another little bow to the top. I pulled it off. I don't even know why I did that, actually. I wasn't sure what I was going for at the time. And then I took three little mini mums, two red and one white, and I made a little... I, I kind of tucked them behind the bows. See? One red on each side and then a white in the middle. And then I'm going to fix my edges that didn't get stained. Um, the ends of the Jenga blocks that I didn't stain, see? And if that doesn't bother you, you could probably leave it just as is. Or you could stain them from the start. <laughs> I just didn't realize that those were going to be showing. Didn't even think about it. Didn't even occur to me. But that's okay. I fixed it right up and it was no, no biggie. Not even noticeable. <clears throat> And that'll about do it. I hope you like it. And now I'm going to start by painting four of these uh, leaf um, ornaments from the Dollar Tree. And my paints are Harvest Orange, Apricot by Apple Barrel. Those two are both by Apple Barrel. And then Truffle by Waverly. And then um, <clears throat> Merlot by Waverly. And that's a pretty maroon color. I really love it. And I'm going to start by painting the leaf with just plain Harvest Orange. <clears throat> Excuse me, I know I'm clearing my throat a lot. And I'm just painting the whole thing this color. I got a piece of the hair from the brush on in my paint, so <laughs> I was trying to get that off. And then I'm going to start highlighting with um, Apricot by Apple Barrel. It's like this pretty orangey-yellow color. More yellow than orange, though. I'm sure you can see that. Isn't that beautiful? And I did, like, overdo this leaf quite a bit. Like, I just did it till I liked what I saw. And the only reason I didn't cut any of that out of this video is because... I just didn't want to keep anything from you guys that I usually do because, you know, I want to make sure y'all see everything and I'm not keeping anything from y'all. <laughs> so, <clears throat> but that's just typically how I would do it. You could just paint it plain if you want or just leave it orange with the yellowish highlights and even that's beautiful. But I like to go the extra mile sometimes and just keep uh, blending different paints. And I do know what's really pretty is if you, um, like how I did the lines on here, 
It's really beautiful if you take the uh, maroon color and do the lines and then blend that out with the harvest orange. And see now I'm just adding more highlights in between the lines. And kind of went over them too a little bit just to kind of blend everything. But you'll see what I mean about how I drug it out way longer than I really had to. <laughs> The thing is, I had painted some of these off camera, and I was trying to make it look as close to those as I could, and that's how that happened. But, <clears throat> in either way, I mean, came out nice. <clears throat> and I just keep painting and painting till I like what I see, blending and blending. <clears throat> And see I'm adding more lines with the maroon color paint. And see some more harvest orange paint. I think that's what I wound up using to blend out my maroon color. It's what I normally would use. But I think I wound up going into the apricot color and I like, what am I doing? And just kept redoing stuff. But yeah, I just kept going till I liked what I saw, till I liked what I saw. And and I mean, like I said, you can make this as simple or as detailed as you want. I mean, the sky is the limit. <clears throat> you could even paint these yellow and add a little bit of like orange streaks you could paint it orange and add some yellow streaks you could do whatever you want with these you could even paint them red that would even be pretty or brown like there's literally all different things you can do with these this is just my preference but I really hope you guys like it either way and I'm going to blow dry this a little bit so that way my paints aren't blending too much. Because there's some colors I just didn't want blended too much. But see, I'll wind up going in with more highlights. Even that would have looked cool. I could have just left it like that. <laughs> I just wanted them to match as much as possible, I guess. And I don't know if you guys have ever done this, like where you do something, like whether it's a craft project or just anything, a recipe, and it turns out so great the first time, and then for some reason you can't do it the same anymore. Well, that's what happened here. I was trying to make this leaf like my other leaves that I did, and for some reason I just could not figure out how I did it. I must have blended the paint a certain way, or I don't know. But I was just trying to make them as close as possible because I'm trying to make a cute little decor set. So I was just trying to make sure they were at least similar. And then going in with more of the maroon. Just painting and painting and blending and blending like I said. I'm using like a skinny brush here and then um, took some of the harvest orange as you can see and that looks really pretty blended with the maroon color it really does like look at that how that blends
And see, now I'm just kind of fixing the um, mistake of too much maroon and just adding more of my orange tones. And then I do still go in with the maroon because I'm trying to add my lines, you know, I don't want them to disappear. <clears throat> and I was also trying to make it like my other leaves. And I don't know if you've ever, like, done something and you don't remember how you did it. Well, that's what happened with my other leaves. Like, I painted it and I really loved how they came out, but I couldn't remember how I did that, how I got that effect. So, that's what actually took me so long on this leaf, too. I was trying to make it just like my other ones, but, eh, it's fine. I probably could have stopped a long time ago, but I just decided to show you guys everything, just so I'm not holding anything back. But it still winds up really nice. I'll try not to make it so drug out next time. I'm so sorry. And now I'm going to take uh, Jenga blocks that I painted off camera in the color Truffle by Waverly. And it's going to take two blocks per leaf and there's going to be four leaves. And I'm going to glue it on each side of the bottom of the leaf, kind of like slanted as you can see. And you'll see where I'm going with this. You might already know where I'm going with this. I'll give you a clue. There's four letters in the word fall. <laughs> I just gave it away. But um, yeah, anyways, I'm just going to keep hot gluing to each side of the bottom slanted. Because I found that the sticker letters that I had, um, for some reason, they fit better on there. See? They're kind of big in a way, but they fit better on there when the leaf is slanted. <clears throat> so yeah, here's the F for the first leaf. And that looked nice on there, though. Really nice. And I just thought up this idea out of nowhere. I hope nobody else has done this and think that I'm copying them, because honestly, I thought I made it up. If I didn't, I'm so sorry. But hopefully, hopefully, I didn't copy anyone unknowingly. <laughs> And then I'm just going to keep on till I spell fall. <clears throat> Luckily, I had enough letters for this. But I really like how that looks. It's really neat. And you could have done this with the pumpkins, too, because they also have pumpkin ornaments. <clears throat> and maybe next time I will do it with pumpkins. That would still be pretty. Then I'm going to go over each leaf with some Mod Podge just to make sure that my uh, letters stay. That's the main reason I'm doing that, is because I don't want my letters to peel off too easily, because they are just stickers. <clears throat> and I'm just going to do each one, just one coat, it's probably fine. That's all I even did was one coat. I added it kind of generously, but not too much, of course. This one was really fun. I can't wait to do more like this. <clears throat> I bet you could even put little sayings on them, too. That would even be cute. Now I'm going to tie four little um, twine bows because the little holes at the tops of the ornaments, I kind of want to cover up because these are going to be sitting instead of hanging, so <clears throat> I kind of want to cover those up. I could have used spackle, and I didn't even think of that from the start, so before I painted them, but that's okay. This actually wound up cute. See? And I just did four, I mean, four bows, yes, one for each one, and then I just burned away the hairs of the twine with a lighter. 
And you don't have to do this. I just don't really like how they look. So I just singed them away. <laughs> and then this is them sitting. And I just think they look so cute on a shelf. Well, that'll be all. Thank you guys so much. I hope you guys liked it. Thank you so much and God bless.